I have talked about um, how to calculate growing degree days to time tilling to disrupt three quarter half alpha hopper life cycles um, before, but I do want to run back through walking through um, how you can easily do it um, for this upcoming growing season next year um, and to get some feedback on um, who has actually already done it. So I am gonna start with launching a poll. So you'll see in front of you um, a question, please consider answering the question. It's very helpful in our programs to understand um, how, um, how many people are actually using what we put out there um, and maybe some of um, the roadblocks in actually using them. So in the 2022 growing season, did you use the model to determine the time for ground cover management is the question. So I'm gonna leave that live um, for a few minutes um, and I am going to move on with the presentation. Um, so <clears throat> to view you the full presentation, sorry. You can go to ucanr.edu forward slash ncipm. NC is North Coast IPM. Um, this is my page. <laughs> so it has a lot of helpful information outside of models um, about insect pests, invasive species. Um, and it also has links to our North Coast IPM seminar presentations from the last two years. Uh, we will also, at a later date, be posting um, today and tomorrow's presentations on this page also. So if you ever want to go back and watch a video from previous years, you can access them here, along with more information about insect pest problems of grapevines um, in general. So if you go to this page, on the left-hand side, you're going to click on three-cornered alfalfa hopper degree day model, and then click on watch video here. And that video is gonna walk you through how to use the model. I'm gonna talk about it today, but you might not remember all the details. Um, and if at a later date you wanna use the model, you might be like, oh, so how do I do that again? This walks you through, you can watch the video at any time um, and it will help you um, figure out how it's done. It's pretty straightforward, um, but it'll give you the links where you need to go and everything, or you can watch the video directly on the UCC uh, Sonoma YouTube page, which the address is listed below. Um, okay. So this is a very shortened version. I have 15 minutes. Um, there, is, there was a lot of research done uh, to figure out the association of three corner alpha, alpha hopper with grapevines and with vineyards. Um, so we had a better understanding of what this insect vector of grapevine red blotch uh, virus was doing in the vineyard. Um, so we had a better understanding of how we could possibly um, have control measures of this insect. Um, part of that was this, the model that we um, published, and this was in collaboration with Emily Bick, who is the assistant professor of precision pest uh, ecology at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Um, and so what you're looking for, looking at in the graph in front of you, um, we expect to initially find adults in the, um, from the first infield generation between uh, 3,137 and 3,447 accumulated degree days, and that's in Fahrenheit. And that's the area here highlighted in yellow. That's when we expect to find it. And this was specifically for 2016, um, which was the year that we were validating the model with. So tilling recommendation um, would be, in, is in red here, this area here, that indicates when 25% to approximately 80% of small nymphs are present in the field. So you see here that we have in green is when we were, expect the small nymphs to be around. And then in, in this blue is when large nymphs are expected. And in black, then they, then they become adults. And, um, and so that's when we expect the adult population to emerge. So 
it really is this window of time that we're trying to figure out um, when that falls. Now it's going to fall different times each year because temperature is different each year. And uh, insect development is largely, not 100%, but largely based on temperature. It's temperature driven. So in warmer years, you would expect the first generation to emerge earlier. And in cooler years, the first generation would emerge later. So um, again, here is when 25% is estimated, and this is when 80% is estimated. So this is that window that if we were to till under the ground cover, that the immature stages needed to survive and remove their food source. They don't have wings. They can't disperse long distances to find more food. They, they would then starve um, because there's no other food around if you remove um, all of their food source. So this supports the recommendation for tilling between 2358 and 2817 accumulated degree days, and that's in Fahrenheit, which is this area highlighted in red. Okay, so I'm going to end that poll and we are going to move on to the next poll. Um, if you did use the model, this is a fill in the blank answer of approximately how many acres have you used the model to time tillage for reduction of three corner alfalfa hopper? And I'll leave that up for a minute um, for anyone that would like to enter in the information. So here we go. This is the page that you want to go to. You, if you want to uh, figure out your degree days, um, you're going to take a screenshot, a photo. Um, I don't know why it keeps doing that. Of this URL, http colon forward slash forward slash ipm.ucanr.edu forward slash weather forward slash index dot html. This is what the page looks like. Um, and so you get to this page, you're gonna scroll down um, this page to view the degree day cal calculator, which is at the very bottom. And as you can see here, you're going to choose Fahrenheit, the enter the low of 32 degrees, since that is freezing in Fahrenheit, um, and then click calculate. The next page is gonna look I, I cropped it, but this is what it looks like. The gist of the page of what you're gonna be looking for is here. Um, and so you're going to click, uh, choose where you want your, your weather station to be. For me, I'm in Sonoma. Um, so I click um, choose Sonoma. You choose your start date and your end date. Um, so this one, actually I should have taken a screenshot of this saying January 1st. So you want to set the start date to be January 1st of the current year, the year that you're interested in. So in 2022, we put January 1st, 2022, and then the end date is your current date of where you're, you know, whatever today's date is. And so I, I actually took a screenshot uh, two days ago. So that was November 14th. Um, and then you're gonna click continue. You're gonna then be given a list of local weather stations. You're gonna to try to choose the, the weather station closest to your current uh, vineyard, whatever, wherever you're planning to implement this. So your current vineyard that you are planning to, to till at a certain time, you're gonna choose that the, the station closest. So I chose this closest station to my office. So here is Santa Rosa.a, and then you choose that. And then you this will be already, um, air temperature will be already chosen. And then all you have to do is click calculate on this page. When you click calculate, then it shows you here, you see on the left-hand side, the date, January 1st, all the way down. Um, and then it will show you your cumulative, this is what you're looking for right here. This is your accumulated degree days. And as you can see, it accumulates. It gets larger and larger as the days go on. Um, so you're going to scroll down to uh, the current date going, going down the page. Um, and again, remember we're looking for 2358 to 2817 as the range. So I scrolled down, this is a tight um, screenshot. I scrolled down and you can see 2358, here's 2360. That's right after 58. 
to 2817, this is 2808. That's right before 2817. This is the window of time that the model predicts would be ideal to till under, which is about two and a half weeks worth of time. So this, in 2022, for a vineyard close to my office, say my, the vineyard was at my office, um, the range would be to till under May 6th to May 23rd. Now, again, that will change from year to year according to the, the cumulative weather. It also changed from certain locations, different parts of the county are, or counties um, don't accumulate the same degree days at the same time. So although it'll be similar, um, it will not be exact. So you do wanna run the model each year to know when this window starts so that you can make plans to till under your ground cover. <coughs> so with that, um, this is not an answer for everyone. Um, the information is not meant to be anti-cover crop or legumes, which both have amazing benefits to plant diversity, beneficials and soil health of a vineyard. The information is not meant to be pro-tillage either or a call to start to till. There are pros and cons to tillage um, that need to be weighed out before making any change. And I'm not saying you should make any change, but if you're already, if you already till, uh, a grapevine red blotch disease is an issue in your vineyard and you have Tika present timing that tillage, a practice you're already planning to do um, can help reduce your Tika populations. So with that, I am going to ask one more question, launch one more poll. Um, about in 2023, so we're looking forward to next year. Uh, I plan to use the model to time ground cover management and there's multiple options um, as answers. And this is again, very helpful in developing my program and understanding um, what your needs are and if I'm meeting those needs. Um, and with that, I will stop sharing my screen. And I believe I do have some questions. I have a few minutes. Um, in theory, could you use the model to time the release of lace wings on the ground cover to target the first generation nymph population? So although I have done work with biocontrol in a laboratory greenhouse setting in which green lace wings were um, very effective um, at attacking three-corner alfalfa hopper nymphs of different um, stages. We had significant results. Those, those um, results were never tested in a field setting. Um, and so you can get uh, very positive results in um, a lab setting or, uh, or a greenhouse setting that doesn't necessarily um, fall over into the vineyard. So uh, in-field research studies would need to be done to tell you if it's even efficacious to uh, release lace wings for that purpose. Um, but in theory, if you chose to release lace wings, um, yes, that would be the period that you would know that your immature stages, um, the early instars are what we're going after, first through third instar, that's when they should be present if you um, have three-corner alpha alpha hopper in your vineyard. Um, just to clarify, if you till before the window, you should be okay, correct. Um, so it depends on how early, how much earlier before that window. Um, and the reason being is that you do, if you're going to till, you do want the three-corner alpha alpha hopper to have a place to lay those eggs. Because once they lay those eggs, the adults die off. Those overwintering generation die off. Um, and if you don't give them a place to lay the eggs, they will find, um, they will go in, in other areas to find a place to lay eggs. So um, by giving them a place to lay eggs, they, the adults begin to die off. Um, and then you are able to till under. If you till under when it's eggs, um, the plants will die, the eggs will desiccate, and they won't be viable. So it would, in theory, still work. Um, as long as you're not uh, tilling under before the eggs are laid. So it's not much, the eggs are usually seven to 10 days in, in decent weather for development and to, re, to um, emerge as a nymph. 
So it's only slightly before that window. Um, let's see. The model did not give me an opportunity to select dates. Also, after selecting the station, it's a dead end. There's no next to get to the next stage. All I see is the station information, how to get the table of degree days. Susan, um, can you email me this? In, my email is ccron at ucdavis.edu. Um, and I can work through whatever specific issue you're having with your station. Um, and I'm not sure I understand the not selecting date. So I need to walk through this with you. Um, 